Greetings and welcome to another lecture in introductory psychology. This one is part of the brain and it involves the synapse and synaptic transmission or how signals are sent from one neuron to another. Now to give you an idea of what we're looking at here, we're looking at an area of the neuron that is technically called the synapse, unless you're from England and then it's called the synapse. Now what we have here, right here, is we have an axon terminal and we have a synaptic knob. Now if you're not familiar with those terms you may want to go and watch the structure of the neuron talk that I give or you may want to check it out in your textbook but what we have is again axon terminal and a synaptic knob. Now inside the synaptic knob we have what are called synaptic vesicles V-E-S-I-C-L-E-S S, vesicles. And inside these synaptic vesicles are structures that are called neurotransmitters. Now neurotransmitter, that's a wonderful word because it's named exactly what it is, or rather what it does. Now what it, the neurotransmitter does is it transmits information from one neuron to another. It's just that simple. It's named exactly what it does. So inside these synaptic vesicles, these little bubbles inside the synapse, are these neurotransmitter molecules. Now you can learn more about neurotransmitters from your text. There's lots of different kinds, some of which will be more important to us than others. And meanwhile, this terminal button right here is very, very close to the dendrite of another neuron. And when I say close, I mean close. Now they don't actually touch. Notice that there is a tiny little gap there, which is actually known as the synaptic gap. I love when things are named exactly what they are. We have the synaptic gap here before we get to this dendrite. Now, this neuron here, which is sending the information on through its synaptic knob, is called the presynaptic neuron meaning before, it's before the synapse. This dendrite here that's getting the information is called the postsynaptic neuron, except in this diagram where it's called postpynaptic. Lovely typos. I didn't make it up. Uh, so presynaptic, postsynaptic, this whole area here where this synaptic knob is getting near the dendrite is called the synapse. Inside this dendrite, inside the cell wall of this dendrite are channels called receptor sites, neurotransmitter receptors. And these will become important in just a minute. So here we are, action potential. That wave of positive ions is heading down the pike. And by the way, you may want to go review that as well. So that wave of positive ions is heading down the pike here. It gets to the synaptic knob. And what it does once it gets to the synaptic knob is it tells some of these synaptic vesicles to move to the cell wall here, to fuse with it, and to open up and spit the neurotransmitter out into this tiny little gap, like this one right here is doing. It's opening it up and it's spitting it out into the gap. Now, yes, some of the neurotransmitters then wind up basically drifting off and are never seen again. But since this gap is so, so small, most of the neurotransmitters just bop right across and hopefully hit a receptor site. Now you'll notice that this particular synapse is spitting out, you know, this, this, this presynaptic neuron is spitting out both these little red jobs and these larger blue balls. Now, receptor sites are basically designed, they're, they're, they, they only allow one type of neurotransmitter into them. The way to think about neurotransmitters and receptor, and receptor sites is to think of keys and locks. You probably have a ring of keys. It probably has lots of different keys on it. Keys for your home, keys for your car, maybe keys for your office, keys for your mailbox. There's lots and lots of keys there, keys for your bike. And they all are different sizes and they all work on different locks. If you try to unlock your house door with your car key, you're not going to get very far, are you? No. So all of these receptor sites only fit one particular neurotransmitter. That neurotransmitter fits into that receptor site. And in the same way that when you stick a key into a lock, you can unlock the door. When that neurotransmitter goes into the receptor site on the postsynaptic neuron, it causes a change in that postsynaptic neuron. 
it either makes that postsynaptic neuron more likely to fire or it makes it less likely to fire. That's it. Your entire body runs on, you know, crank it up or dial it down, essentially. That is the signal that is sent, and that then is interpreted in all the myriad ways that our bodies function. That's allowing you to write and talk and look and probably roll your eyes a little bit thinking it's just a, it's, it's just a more or less. Yeah, it's like a dimmer switch, basically. You crank it up so that there's more of these action potentials, or you dial it down so there's fewer. Both of those mean something. Okay. Now, once that signal has been sent, what they want to do is they want to clear out the receptor site in case there's another wave of signals coming in. Remember, neurons can easily fire 60, 100 times a second. Okay? I mean, that's a lot of signals coming through. So they really quickly need to clear the decks, as it were, in case there's another bank of signals coming in. So what those receptor sites do is they do one of two things. They either kick that neurotransmitter out, so it winds up in that synaptic gap again, where it either floats away or, in many cases, is taken back up by the presynaptic neuron and recycled. Neurotransmitters are expensive to make, and you make them in the cell body, and then they have to be shipped all the way down the axon, and that could take a while. So in a lot of ways, it's just easier to recycle what you have. Our bodies are very thrifty. They're very frugal. We're not going to spend a lot of energy doing stuff that we don't need to do. So a lot of times, that neurotransmitter is taken back up after it's spit out by the receptor site. That presynaptic neuron grabs it, and repackages it, and recycles it, and uses it again. Sometimes, the postsynaptic neuron will engulf it and grab it and package it and send it all the way down to its synaptic knobs. Yes, that can take a while. Yes, it's going to take a bit of energy, but it's still cheaper, as it were, than making your own. So generally, neurotransmitters get recycled. So that's how it works. That is synaptic transmission. Signal comes down to the to the presynaptic neuron, to the synaptic knob. That signal causes some of those synaptic vesicles filled with neurotransmitter to move to the cell wall, fuse with it, open up, and spit their contents, spit those neurotransmitters out into that synaptic gap. Whereupon the neurotransmitters drift across that very, very tiny gap and fit into receptor sites and cause a change in that postsynaptic neuron, make it more likely to fire, make it less likely to fire. And then those neurotransmitters are recycled. They're, it's called reuptake. They're either recycled by the postsynaptic neuron, sort of claiming them as their own, or they are spit out and recycled by the presynaptic neuron. By the way, if you're wondering why that little gap is there, well, I don't know why it's there. It's, it's probably there because of an accident. But it is at the synaptic gap. It is at the synapse that medications work. Pretty much all the ones that I can think of. They change synaptic transmission. They make it more likely, less likely. They change the ratios. They change synaptic. They take the place of neurotransmitters. They block neurotransmitters. It is at this synapse that drugs and all medications, whether legal, illegal, prescribed or not, everything from caffeine to heroin, Okay, It all works at the synapse, it modifies synaptic transmission, and it causes a change that comes from the outside more than from the inside here.